We all, it is great to be with you today and uh, to be here at Capitol Day with MEC. And Blake, I think back to about 2002, 2003 was the first MEC event I attended representing the manufacturer I was working for at the time as we work on the initial blueprint. Gosh, what a way this organization has come. And as a father, I want to say thank you because the, the future you've given my children, your children and grandchildren, the employees that work with you and the jobs you've created, wow. It is a great example of public-private partnership working. And how many times have we said, you know, government doesn't create jobs. It's this room full of folks. And we want to say thank you. Now, Lynn, you talked about giving away taxpayer dollars. I hate to break it to you, sweetheart, but as state auditor, I see folks giving away our tax dollars every day. <laughs> we get to hold them accountable, Scott. And the other thing is, I thought as Delbert was talking, anytime a lawyer walks in a room wearing a three-piece pinstripe suit, I get nervous. But aren't y'all glad we got Delbert? So Delbert, thank you, sir. <laughs> Lynn, it's an honor working with you guys, Mike Cheney, Cindy Hyde-Smith, uh, the rest of our statewide elected officials and our district folks day in and day out working for you. And it's a privilege, and every single one of us understand who our bosses are. And it's not us. It's not our employees, it's you, the taxpayers of Mississippi. And MEC helps cast that vision. Now, a lot of times, a lot of some of you have heard me talk and share about the job we do as state auditor. We talk about the audit, what we do. We just issued the comprehensive annual financial report of the state of Mississippi, and folks get so excited. I know you don't, but our bond rating gets affected by those things. It's important, and for over 25 years, Mississippi has received an excellence award from the Government Financial Officers Association for our comprehensive annual financial report. So it's a job that we've done year in, year out, consistently doing what mom and dad taught us to do in Sunday school when it comes to accountability and doing the right thing. And we want to make sure we're standing firm on that legacy and that foundation as we continue to move Mississippi forward. But let me share with you very briefly three key things that you're going to be seeing coming out of the auditor's office that aren't necessarily putting the individuals who have given away our money or stolen or embezzled, my favorite term, misappropriated. What the heck does that mean? You know, they, I just can't put them in jail for it, but we know they took it. You know, we all see that. We see the headlines of the convictions, the indictments. But there are three things that impact this community and the financial health and welfare of our state moving forward you're going to see coming out of the office. And I've always heard there are three key things that every Mississippian, really every American is looking for, health care, job creation, and education. Well, let me share with you a little bit of what we're doing in those areas. Last year, we got a lot of headlines, what we do in education, Dr. Wright, when it comes to our MSIS audits, where we're in those school districts and we're looking at the MAP funding formula. And last year, as we worked through that, we discovered, just like Common Core state standards showed, there wasn't a standard definition of the success and measurement from state to state. And what we discovered in Mississippi, we didn't have a standard definition of an average daily attendance. So what was happening in Jones County, where I live, versus what's happening in Rankin, Madison, Hines, where we are today, may be different. And it wasn't the same across the state. And that impacts funding and equity and all of these factors. The legislature took action last year. We have now a standard definition across Mississippi to incentivize those school districts to keep those kids in school learning so they have the opportunity to perform and have a better and brighter future. That was step one. And this year, we will continue through that MSIS process validating our test scores so that when we hear statistics from NAEP and elsewhere and our state standardized tests that are involved with Common Core standards, we know and trust that those numbers are accurate that they're real and they're firm. And as your state auditor, my job is to partner with our education community across Mississippi so we have confidence in our local school districts and we're gonna continue doing that day in and day out and year in and year out. Education, it's important that we trust the numbers and we know what we're getting. But the other aspect is job creation. Now we make a lot of news when we do the major economic development programs across Mississippi from Toyota to Nissan and Irwin Ingalls. Who makes sure that we don't well, that money is spent the way it was supposed to be spent, and the jobs that were promised to be created were created, and they're paying what was promised to be paid. That's my job. And we go in with our companies who have partnered with Mississippi and created these jobs, and they open up their books, and they open up their human resource offices, and say, come in and let us show, and let the taxpayers of Mississippi have confidence that these economic development programs are good, are solid, and need to continue. 
because we never want to lose the trust of the taxpayers of the state of Mississippi when it comes to these programs. But what we have discovered is there are over a dozen bond and economic incentive programs based on state monies that are not necessarily audited. And we want to make sure that the legislature addresses that this year, that just like the major economic programs, our small and local incentive programs are also audited so that at the end of the day, the legislature, our business community, and the taxpayers of Mississippi have full confidence that companies that receive the support, the input, the resources of our state government are doing and holding up their end of the bargain. You know, we joke in the auditor's office, when I got sworn into the state senate in 2004, we started cleaning up the beef plant mess. And then I got sworn in as state auditor, we, we're still cleaning up the beef plant mess. We're going to be announcing in a couple of weeks that we've got another check back as we continue to get money. Here I'm in my second term, still cleaning up the beef plant mess. MEC, the legislature, the auditor's office are making sure that never happens again and that the public will have trust and confidence in how we spend their money and creating jobs and creating opportunities and an environment that businesses can grow, businesses can expand, and Mississippians have a better and brighter future. And as your state auditor, I pledge to protect that part of our business environment in Mississippi. Healthcare is the last pillar of economic development. Companies are looking to their local communities and the quality of life, the standard of living their employees are going to be asked when they ask and hire folks from outside of Mississippi and they move in, health care and access, availability and quality are the questions they're asking. In February, we're going to release a report that looks at all of our community-owned hospitals. Now, let me be very clear. What makes a small rural community-owned hospital? Most of our counties, like mine in Jones County, we actually own the hospital. How really financially healthy are those hospitals across Mississippi? Well, we have done the research, we've done the work, not only using national standards and rankings, but also the local financial, and we'll be able to give you a listing of not only our green light hospitals that are financially healthy and successful and have a bright future, but we're also going to let us, the state know which of our local community-owned hospitals are at risk or in danger. And as your state auditor, we think our local governments who are responsible for those hospitals deserve to know what they're dealing with and what their options are. I'll share you one personal story on that front and why this is important, because it's not just economic development, but it's a quality of life and health care access is critical. And our family learned that very real about this time last year. See, my father had a massive stroke that left him totally paralyzed. Couldn't speak couldn't eat for days. We weren't sure what the outcome would be. But I tell everybody, I actually saved his life because I was out of town. He had my boys, and they had a basketball game that night, and they wanted to go to the local restaurant with the rest of the team after the game, which was only three blocks from the hospital. But like a lot of Mississippians, if he'd gotten in the car and gone home, he would have been about 30 minutes out in the countryside at our family farm. And if the stroke had happened at that point, I know my father, like so many other independent, strong-willed, working men in Mississippi, he would have told my mother, I'm going to go to bed. If I don't feel better in the morning, we'll go to the hospital then. He may not have made it. Access to hospitals and health care are critical across the state of Mississippi. And if we allow that to falter, where Mississippians don't have health care within 20, 30 minutes, they may not go the 45 minutes or an hour to get to health care that they need. And if that had been in my father's situation, he would not be walking, much less possibly be with us today. Because they were able to get that shot in his system within three hours of the stroke happening today. He's walking and working. And last night, praise God, he was wrapping pipes at the farm. Y'all may wish you had been at the hotel this morning, weren't you? <laughs> Great success story of health care in Mississippi, but we've got to make sure we're protecting that. And we're dealing with real numbers and not hyperbole and not just sound bites and what ifs, but real numbers, real facts. Dr. Wright, you mentioned transparency, honesty, with ourselves, with one another. Thank y'all for allowing me to serve as your state auditor to be that voice of fact that voice of reason, so that we can continue working together from the public and the private sector to move this state forward so that our children, our grandchildren, will have that bright, better future that every single one of us desire for. Thank you all for being here, investing in your state, and allowing us to serve you.
God bless.